I'm Lori from Be In My Bonnet, and I'm going to talk to you today about embroidery. I designed this Stitchy Fun sampler, and it has uh, six of my favorite embroidery stitches on there. The, I've been teaching embroidery for a long time, and these are my six favorite. These are the six that I learned when I was a little girl, and they're still my favorite, and that's what this sampler consists of. It's an 11 by 14 frame. And I'm just going to show you the six stitches that I use. Around here I use the back stitch and the aqua floss. These are the lazy daisy stitches, French knot, French knot, long stitches, satin stitch, back stitch, back stitch. This zigzag is the long stitch. These are the cross stitches. This is a long stitch. This is a satin stitch, the satin stitch, a back stitch, long stitch long stitches and French knots. Now when I like to um, put batting, a little bit of batting behind my fabric before I frame it, I feel it kind of helps keep, keep a little bit soft, keeps those threads in place and makes it not so bumpy like if you have a big knot underneath. If it was all just on the piece of wood or something then it might stick up a little bit, but that batting kind of absorbs the thicknesses of all your knots and helps to keep it even. I also like to paint my frames. This frame I happened to buy at Hobby Lobby. It's 11 by 14 size and I just painted it. So first of all, I'm going to show you how I trace my pattern on. This pattern is clear. Your pattern will come on a white piece of paper which will make it a little bit easier to see. And I like to put it on a light box so that you can see through your fabric. So here I place my pattern on my light box. Turn on the light box and when you place your fabric on you'll see how you can see through it. I've already traced some of my pattern on but wh what I usually do is I'll tape it on the light box just so that it doesn't slip and sometimes I'll tape my fabric on the light box. When I prepare my fabric I always cut it about two inches larger than I want the design and then I like to zigzag or serge the edges so that it doesn't fray during the stitchery process and so you can just lay it on here and you can use what you want to trace on here. I either use a mechanical pencil if I want a really thin line or I use these Pigma pens, these Micron pens uh, a point one is the smallest. You can go up as high as you want for depending on how thick you want your line. These I just used a point one. And what I do is I just tape it on there and I just trace a real thin line. But remember this is a permanent line. It's not gonna, going to come off and so your stitching is going to have to cover your line. So you want it thin enough but dark enough so that you can see it. So after your pattern is traced then we'll go on and place it in the hoop. Okay, so let's talk about frames or hoops. You can use any size hoop that you want, like a traditional hoop, which I use a lot. But most of the time I use these Q-snap frames because I like how they don't gather your fabric and it keeps your pieces nice and flat. If, you're, if I'm doing a round design, then I'll usually use a hoop. And What's nice about the Q-snap is you just hold your fabric over it and snap it right into place. It comes in several sizes. This is a smaller size and I just have some sample embroidery that I'm going to show you. So some of the stitches. But see sometimes you can, I like this because you can adjust the tension on it. If you need to have it a little bit looser you can go like that to do a certain stitch or if you really need it tight you can tighten it up. Okay, let's talk about floss. For this stitchy sampler, I used DMC. So for the tulips, I used a back stitch. And I used three strands of floss throughout. So what you want to do when you're separating your strands, because it comes in six strands, and I want to separate it in half. First you cut a length, probably about 18 inches. You don't really want it longer than that, because it's gets easily tangled, but approximately that. But I can get two lengths out of this because I'm going to separate it. So what I do is I just separate three and three right here and kind of divide it 
between my fingers and then I'll take a finger and move my way down slowly and just untwist it. And by doing it that way, they're both separated, ready to go and not tangled up. I'll just set this one aside and go ahead and thread it in my needle. Now the needles that I use are a little bit longer needles. I like to use a little bit longer. These are embroidery red work needles, size 10. You can use whatever size you want. These happen to be uh, Gina Kimball's Fox Glove Cottage, size 10. They're a little bit longer and they also have, the eye of the needle has a little bit larger hole to accommodate the three strands of floss. So I just go ahead and thread my needle. Pull it down till there's about six inches left at the bottom and I'm going to show you how to do a knot. So what you want to do is you take the end of your thread and you lay it across your index finger and you take the tip of your needle across there just like that so you're making a T Hold that with your two fingers. Take the top of your thread. You can see this is a loop. So it's forming a loop from the thread and the end goes up here. You're going to wrap it around three times. I wrap it around three times when I use three strands of floss and I wrap it around two times when I use two strands. That way it helps me make the right size knot. So I've wrapped it around three times and then I just kind of pull that down, scrunch those knots down so they're together. Put my finger and my thumb together to hold them. I'm holding them in place but I'm not pinching real tight so that I can push my needle up, keeping my thumb and finger together. I pull it up and I've got a knot. And then I can just clip the end off. You don't want a long tail there because you don't want it to show behind your embroidery work.